The breathtaking scenery of Salt Pond Mountain is well known to the locals and all those who visit. Located in Giles County, Southwest Virginia, these mountains happen to fall in the valley and ridge province of the Appalachians. This landscape has been molded by millions of years of deformation due to the collision of land masses through the course of four different mountain building events. These mountain building events would result in the formation of anticline and syncline folds. It is these folds that give the valley and ridge its unique topography, as well as providing resources to the people of the region in the form of natural gases. These mountain ranges that stand at an incredible 4,045 feet have somehow stood the test of time against erosional forces. When exploring Saw Pond Mountain, you may come across large mysterious boulders as their predominant feature that dot the But what are they? Where did they come from? And what role do they play in the success of Salt Pond Mountain? While there are six rock units exposed along the mountain lake and Bald Knob Hiking Trail, the most important to the scenery of the area is the Tuscarora Sandstone, as indicated by the red markings. On this geologic map, it is exposed all the way to the top of the ridge. These valleys and ridges can be accentuated when looking at a LiDAR image of the area. Dark shadowy parts on this image show steep elevation changes linked to ridges. Tuscarora is an orthosilicate, which is a metamorphic rock whose protolith was a pure quartz sandstone cemented with silica. These rocks have a silica content of over 99%, which give rise to their extreme resistance to both chemical and mechanical weathering. Outcrops of the Tuscarora are defined by their unique weathering pattern, which is indicative of very old rocks and orthosilicates, which, as previously mentioned, are resistant to erosion but not entirely impervious. Over time, as rainwater mixes with the silica in these rocks, silicic acid forms, which slowly dissolves the surface away. It's also thought that aeolian or wind-driven erosion is playing a role in the creation of these very distinct bowl-like features. So now that we've taken a look at the surface properties, let's see what's happening below the surface to make the Tuscarora so prominent. Here we see a cross-section of the area with Salt Pond Mountain denoted by the Red Star. This area is part of the Butt Mountain Synclorium that has been thrust atop the Richland Sheet via the St. Clair Fault. This helped elevate the Tuscarora Formation to what is now ground level and ultimately aid in the formation of the valleys and ridges we see today. But what caused these boulders to break from the top of the ridge? Why are they here? We think that that is uh, really facilitated by freeze-thaw cycles. So you have water that um, kind of seeps into pre-existing fractures like um, joints and bedding planes in, in the rock um, when it's sitting there as an outcrop. And then when the weather gets colder and it freezes, you know, ice uh, expands as it freezes and will we'll kind of propagate those planes of weakness and eventually, if you pop off enough planes of weakness, you, you get a boulder. So now that we know where the boulders come from, we can see how they may affect underlying units. We are standing in the riverbed of Big Stony Creek. To the left is an outcrop of Middle Ordovician limestone that is approximately 420 million years old and is located 580 meters below the Tuscarora sandstone. It is the targeted bed for a local mine due to its high calcium content. The limestone's highly erodible nature is responsible for regional subsidence and cave formation around the Salt Pond Mountain syncline. Local karst topography is associated with this thick limestone bed. Salt Pond Mountain is part of the Butt Mountain syncline, and due to its synclinal nature, the more resistant Tuscarora does not shield the limestone from chemical erosion induced by water flow. Subsequently, large sinkholes are a common formation capable of consuming thousands of gallons of water per minute, compromising the infrastructure around them. We just saw a few modern day implications of the Tuscarora, but what about their history? What are more human impacts? During the Civil War, narrow valleys, steep ridges, and rivers and streams made it very difficult to move an army through the Valley and Ridge province, as supply lines could easily be cut. Many of these features can be credited to unique deformation caused by anticlines, synclines, and the tough Tuscarora sandstone. The hazards presented by the Tuscarora are not limited to Civil War soldiers. Anyone in the area should be aware of the possible effects these large boulders present. The sandstone blocks of the Tuscarora can create hazardous conditions in southwest Virginia. 
These large blocks sit precariously on tops of ridges and have the possibility of falling down, creating landslides and debris flows. The Tuscarora, while mysterious at first, can be broken down geologically to describe why it's there, where it came from, and what larger implications it has on the landscape. Thanks for watching.